allow me to share a story with you. There was an airplane, an Eastern Airline Flight 401, on its way from JFK to Miami International Airport. You see, this flight crashes into the Miami Everglades on December the 29th, 1972, at 11.42 p.m. because there was a pilot error and a $5 malfunction light bulb. And while in the air to Miami's airport, the pilot drops the landing gear, but the little green light that was supposed to eliminate to show that the wheels were down, it did not. The pilots were unsure if the wheels were down to make the landing safe. The crash occurs due to the fact the crew were preoccupied with the landing gear indicator light and failing to notice that the autopilot command had been disconnected. And as for the results with the preoccupied crew members with the little green light, the disconnected autopilot, it being night and the Everglades in the Miami being dark, no one noticed the, the decline in altitude which led to their destruction. It was later determined that the landing gear was down, but that little green light had already burned out. Those small things, those small things are usually the one things that get us today. And if we were to just reflect on some of those moments where we find ourselves in those tight situations and wonder, how did I get here? I'm pretty sure that you would discover it started around something so small. That one small thing brought in something a whole lot bigger, making a bigger situation in our lives. This is what the children of Israel can testify to. There is a pattern that is like us today. Their pattern of the cycle of doing the same thing over and over. Follow and worship the ways of the Lord, followed by a period of failing to sin and, and an other idolatry. Next period would be a period of, of oppression upon them. But get this, that this oppression would be because God directed their same enemies to oppress them. And by this punishment, the Israelites would cry out to the Lord and God would raise up a judge to fight on behalf of Israel, making Israel back in deliverance with God. And in the period of deliverance, they would have peace for 40 years up to 80 years. Then the cycle would start again. You see, this pattern cycle is one repeated over and over and over. And matter of fact, we can see it in the world today that we live in. And if we can see it in our lives, individually, day to day, you see, Joshua was given the order by God to remove the different tribes from the land of Canaan. This order was also given to the 12 tribes after the death of Joshua. But during the removal of these people, they didn't remove them all. These same small tribes lived with the Israelites, bringing their own gods and ideology into the mix. Even though they were small in numbers, the children of Israel started practicing and worshiping and participating in the same ways of the small group. This anger God, well, he was not pleased. Judges chapter three, starting at verse number seven says that the Israelites did what was wrong in the eyes of the Lord. This will be a repeating verse in the scriptures, in the book of Judges. They forgot the Lord, their God and Worship the Baal and the Ashura. The Lord was angry with Israel, and he sold them to King 
Cushan writes to Sam, who kept them in subjection for eight years. So the children of Israel did what we do today. They cried out to the Lord. God sees in here and raises a judge to take the king down. That judge name was Othanon. After this, after this, there was 40 years of peace until Abinai had died, meaning the cycle will come again. You said, when this question has been asked to me about falling into this same pattern, a pattern that separates us from God, the best way that I can answer is by looking at the book of Judges and ask the question of what is it that God has told you that you need to remove from your life? The children of Israel was told to remove the people that lived in the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised them. They removed most of them, but not all of them. The Israelites started thinking and living like them. Now, could it, be, could it be that we are in that same pattern, a pattern that will lead to sin by thinking and living just like the world and not of God? We find ourselves with being further away from the truth, the truth of God. You see, my father shared a story with me when I asked him this same question. He said, Franklin, there was a man whose father died in prison and his grandfather died in prison. And now he was about to go to prison. He had a young son. And based off of history, he was thinking that one day, since he's going to prison, that he would die in prison and he didn't want to see his son follow the same outcome. So the same man started praying to the Lord to help him. And the answer he received was puzzling at first. He claimed the Lord told him to remove everything in his cell and take nothing in to his cell. Even the bed had to come out. He went to prison and for three long years, he endured prison life without a bed, TV, or any visitors. The only thing that was a pattern in his life was his prayer life. And when he was sick, he would call on the Lord. When he was cold at night, he would call on the Lord. When he was uncomfortable, he would call on the Lord. And when three years passed and he was released, the first question that was asked to him, uh, how did you survive without be a bed, visitation, and cover? He stood and he said, because God wanted me to remove everything that resembled the prison life. Making my mind and body totally depending on the Lord instead of prison. The world can be our prison by the way we think and the way we practice. Practice the world's way. But God wants us to remove things that will make us uncomfortable but totally dependent on him. Next week, we'll be looking at the second judge in our series of Don't Judge Me, Stories from Judges. I'll see you next week.